Okay, welcome everybody to yet another edition of Drunk Agile, which actually this week is going to be semi-drunk agile, or as Pratik said, dry agile. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. With us as always, though, the incomparable, the effervescent, the, <laughs> you see, she kind of looked up at me. <laughs> Nisha, Nisha, thank you for, for joining us. Thank you so much for that. And, um, you know, that other person that you know, this is unfortunate. It's it's a two for one deal. You get Nisha, you get this other person. Other person, what's your name? L literally, the only reason I'm invited, but the Singh. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> every every time I tell my wife we're going over to Pratik's house, it's like, yeah, we're going to we're going to see Pratik right now. <laughs> um, and my name is Daniel Vacanti. Welcome, well, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, this. It's it's a fairly quick episode this week. We had a follow up to our our episode last week, which was about you know um, diff different Monte uh, sorry different forecasting techniques for different situations. Because this is a fairly quick episode, we we decided maybe we won't won't be drinking um, this time. But I promise I shouldn't say I promise, but probably probably next episode we will we will do a little bit more drinking. Um, I think, so I think out of thirty nine episodes so far, it's only been one other episode. So. You all can do the probability math here now. Yeah, yeah. You, can, yeah. <laughs> you don't need us. You don't need yeah. us. Our, our little birds can fly. Do you want to uh, introduce this this week's episode? The the follow up question. Sure. sure. Yeah. So so the question that that, that we received as a follow up was, um, let's say Monte Carlo has told us that we can get twenty things done. Um, at that point, uh, uh, the the audience member who wants to ask us who's asking this question was find out what are those 20 things? Or let's say I have five things in progress right now. Um, how can I tell my customers what are, the, what are the 20 things that they will get at the end of, let's say two weeks. Let's say that's how long the, the, the Monte Carlo was for. Yep, yep. So, so yeah, what, exactly. Exactly, that, that, I think that's the point. While, while they are still in the backlog, I wanna know if Monte Carlo says if I can get 20 items done, what are the exact 20 items in the backlog? Um, that I that I can get done. So, do you want to take that? Are do you, you want to give me your answer? <laughs> <laughs> um, I I will give my answer. So it's um, you can't you can't do that. You can't tell. So, thank you everybody. Good night. Um, no. Yeah, no, unfortunately, that's not how Monte Carlo works. You know, you it, it is while items are still sitting in the backlog, it is impossible to sell. I, I think the example you gave, like you said, if we have 20 things in our backlog and somebody wants to know, hey, when is item number 10 going to be done? It is essentially impossible to say exactly or deterministically when that, that item, even potentially even probabilistically, when that item number 10 will get done. Yeah, um, let's, 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 Okay, let's assume that there are five things that are active right now and you want to know when number 10 will be done. So assuming everything goes absolutely perfectly, like absolutely perfectly and everything, which means you're working these in order and the things that are in progress get done first. So it's first in, first out. The best you can do is kind of look to say, hey, when are 15 things going to get done? That's the five that are active and 10 that, that are upcoming and say, Monte Carlo tells me think 15 things will get done with 80% confidence on this date. So this is when this, I have 80% confidence that this item will get done that day. There are so many problems with that. <laughs> and tons of problems, <laughs> tons and tons and tons of problems. I, I, now that I've set Dan off, he can start on the problems. Yeah. So the, the big assumption you probably heard you heard uh, Pratik talking about is we are working these things in order. You're assuming that you have, number one, that you have a prioritized backlog and that you are working those in order. Um, we're, we're, we're pulling one in and we're working one. We're pulling two in and we're working two. That nothing gets to jump the queue. No new stuff shows up. Nothing. We're working those things in exactly that order, um, which I don't know about anybody else. That's... I. Can I confidently say that's never happened to me? I think I can confidently say that's never happened to me. Um, with, with you know, with any reasonable number of items that are in a backlog. I, I mean, I don't, I don't think I've ever worked, um, which is one of the reasons why you shouldn't prioritize a backlog. But we maybe, I don't know if we've ever done that episode. We should maybe talk I don't think about. we have, but we should. Maybe we should, yeah. Okay, so oh, that's, right. that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, our, yeah our, our whiteboard that Pratik does so well at, at keeping up. 
Um, so that, that, that number one, that's, that's that, that you are working, working these items, um, you know, in you, that you've prioritized a backlog and you're working to that prior, exact priority order. That's, that's problem number one. You want to throw in another one? Yeah. Second one, you kind of already mentioned, but I'll, 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 I'll expand on that, that nothing new is going to show up, right? That there will be no emergencies, no new contracts signed, no compliance or regulate, regulatory requirements that will show up. There is that there, there will be nothing new that shows up and and interjects between item number one you're working on right now and item number 15 that you want to get to. Um, this, the, that also, I can say confidently, in the scope of 15 items has almost never happened that no one gets pulled away for something else. Something new doesn't get dropped on a team. That almost all this happens. Yeah. So, and you know, we. I mean, you know, everything else is kind of, um, kind of just riffing on on one of those two problems. You know that hey, you, you know, you're, you're almost certainly not going to work in order, and you're almost certainly not. You know, there are almost certainly new things that are going to show up. Business requirements are going to change. Um, the the context is going to change. Business landscape is going to change. Um, but 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 so but let's talk about this. Does does this mean that Monte Carlo is useless? I mean, if I what's the what's the point of Monte Carlo if I have a backlog of fifty items and I can't tell my customer exactly when item number forty seven is going to be done? Well, what 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 good is forecasting? What you know why why are we even bothering with, with this stuff? Um, do, do do you want to take a shot at that first or? Yeah, I think I think my 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 base answer for this is something I think we've covered multiple times, which is essentially you're doing risk management. You're trying to find out how much risk is associated with your current plans. And as those plans change or as your performance changes, how much risk is associated with the new plans. That's, that, that's really what you're doing when you're doing forecasting with something like Monte Carlo. Yeah. Um, I, I would add to that as, as a product owner, I personally love the idea of being able to run a Monte Carlo. So let's, 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 let's say we're doing Scrum. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to do planning for the next sprint. And um, I love the idea that I can run a Monte Carlo and kind of know what my budget is, you know, in, in terms of, you know, PBIs or, you know, if you're working in stories or features or whatever, um, that I can, I can kind of roughly expect, you know, over the next two weeks or over the next 30 days. Because I don't necessarily, as a project owner, I don't want to be beholden to a, a prioritized backlog for all the reasons we just said. You know, as I'm finishing PBIs, as I'm finishing stories, as I'm finishing features, that I, I get information off of that. And I may want to change my mind about, yeah, you know, I thought I had it prioritized, you know, one, two, three, but maybe my prioritization now that I've learned something is, you know, three, one, two. Right? And, yeah. and, but that doesn't, if I change that priority, that, that doesn't change the budget. I still know that, hey, over the next two weeks, I've got probably 10 items that, that, that I can work with. And I could choose to kick some of those out. I can choose to pull some new in, but I just know there's probably about 10 things I'm going to get done. I don't know if there's anything <laughs> Are you done? to say about it. That's it. I was like, well, what else do we say? Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. One, the one uh, thing that I think we haven't mentioned that I would like to mention is um, um, the, there was, there's a third thing that changes things, which is items split. We actively encourage uh, people to, to break items up in the age and that's also the reason why item number 15 on your list can become item number 20 uh, as you're working through things. But yeah, that, that's a variation on the new things show up. On the new things show up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah. So hopefully, I mean, this, this may seem like a disappointment. You know, I want to know, you know, in, in my prioritized list of 20 items, I want to know when item 17 is going to be done. Can't do it. You know, I'm just, just sorry to say, it's, it's really, for the most part, it is not possible. Um, and like I said, the reason the reason I'm hedging myself is because there are very extreme circumstances where you might be able to do that, but yeah. in the real world, those those never happen. So that's number one. You, you can't. You, you, I'm sorry. You just you you just can't. Um, and then, but number two, that doesn't mean that Monte Carlo forecasting is not useful, um, because I you know number one, as Pratik said, from a from a risk management perspective, you know we we need to know is whatever initial plan that we. You know, we put together is that is that still on track? Uh, but number two, even more important, and I just shouldn't say more importantly. Additionally, um, we have some flexibility to be able to change that. You know, because we we just we our plan is really just for the budget. Our plan isn't for the exact things we're getting done. Our plan is more for, mm -hmm. you know, how are we how are we allocating that risk? 
So, um, I just summed up, but I don't know if you have a final word. Oh, that's so, it. <laughs> just to, to say with that. Yeah. Okay. I've got as much to say as Nisha right now. I was, yeah. So we promise you this would be a, re a relatively quick episode. Hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully this cleared up maybe some questions that came out of our, our previous episode. Just want to say thanks again for, for everybody who reaches out to us and, yeah. and asks questions. You know, we, we prefer answering your questions rather than us coming over the right. Because I've already forgotten the other one we said we should talk about. Um, yeah. why, you sh why you shouldn't have a prioritized backlog or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I have to watch the tape. I don't know. We'll, it was we'll, it was it was about Monte Carlo. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll watch the tape. So um, <laughs> please keep those questions coming. Um, really do appreciate it. And, and as always, you know, thank you for for watching for for Anisha for Pratik. My name is Daniel Vacanti, and we will see you in the next episode. Good night, everybody. Okay.